creating a defense budget for your kingdom. So we're going to talk about the different tools that are out there to protect your kingdom. When I say kingdom, I mean your personal household, your personal self, your family members, people that you love, people that you protect on a day-to-day -day basis. So that would be like husband, wife, uh, mom, dad, son, daughter, brother, sister, people that you live with, you're protecting them day-to-day, -day, right? And having these tools, these defense tools, help bring tremendous uh, peace of mind, right? Releases a lot of stress, and it's something that you know you need. We all know we need it. It's just a matter of time when it makes the most sense financially to obtain these particular tools while we're in the process of paying off debt, while we're in the process of building our credit, while we're in the process of 10xing our income, establishing a life insurance policy, making a chunk, not making a chunk. So I just want to reveal these different tools that I have personally owned for many years or tools that I've owned for a short period of time and then other tools that I'm looking to obtain, right? And it's just something to just keep your, you know, just be aware of, right? So don't feel like you have to do 500 things at once and get nothing done. So if you're doing velocity banking, do your velocity banking. If you got infinite banking going, do infinite banking, right? If you're just starting out, you're trying to get your credit right, you're, you know, uh, balancing, you know, maybe losing a job or losing income because of the COVID environment, okay, let's focus on the most uh, primary things that you need to focus on. Once we've accomplished them, there's enough cash flow, then we consider, okay, what tools can I add? That's all we're doing is we're consistently adding more and more tools, okay? So let's dive into the lesson here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So, creating a defense budget for your kingdom. What does that look like? So for me personally, Denzel Rodriguez, your finance geek, your, your, your coach, your financial consultant, right? Your friend, your loyal business partner even, maybe, right? Or in the future. Me personally, here are the tools that I've come across in my lifetime so far that have worked very well, okay? Nothing but good things to say about them. And, um, you know, just diving right into it, the very first um, initial defense tools that I've come across from the very beginning was personal and business legal protection, right? Cybersecurity, identity theft protection. These are like, I would say the three main things that I've come across over the last few years that, have, that are just a no-brainer. It's like, it's just like paying for health insurance. It's just like paying for homeowner's insurance. We are in the 21st century. It's 2020. If you were to, you know, do research and look up statistics on the amount of people in America alone that have some sort of identity fraudulent activity that occurs, whether it be in their bank accounts, their credit cards, their credit score, um, you know, false documents, false contracts being, being signed, the amount of spam emails, the amount of spam phone calls that we're now getting, spam text messages, Right, it is insane just the amount of information that is coming out at us into our kingdom on a day to day basis. Right, so very simply, I kind of broke down the specific tools that I personally own right now. Right, so I have personal legal protection, I have identity theft protection, I have business protection gun owner protection, trial defense protection. These are tools that I know I need 
So I account for them in my budget. So for me personally, it's only about 1% to 3% of my annual gross income that I will, that I will set aside to protect my kingdom in any way that I can, right? And then wherever there's holes, I've got money that I've set aside each and every month, each and every year, it's, it's there. Whether I use it or not, it's gonna be there, right? So this is kind of like how we religiously pay, pay for our Netflix, our Apple TV, our Hulu, our Spotify. We pay for these things that do not serve us to our fullest potential, right? They're, they're time drainers for most of the subscriptions that we have, the Amazon subscription, the this subscription, the that, all these things that are not productive for kingdom expansion, for kingdom growth, kingdom building, kingdom principles, kingdom values, right? So developing that discipline is key, okay? So developing the discipline and awareness that you know I need these tools will come over time now I know for quite a bit of you that are over the age of 45 55 in your late 60s even this is probably one of your biggest concerns as you get older, the likelihood of you encountering fraudulent activities, people taking advantage of you, increases because you're older. You know, your cognitive levels are decreasing. You're, you know, you're, you're becoming less healthier. But it's also the time in most people's lives when you have the most amount of assets, right? You have the most amount of income. So that can be you know, very, very tough to come to terms with like, oh my God, you know, I've got a half a million dollars in my 401k. I have a million dollar life insurance policy. I have a hundred thousand saved in the bank, you know, and I don't have any type of cybersecurity protection or any type of identity theft protection or legal protection, nothing. So if I get in an issue, it's going to cost me a significant amount of money to restore myself and something as simple as a bad thing happening to a good person can completely wipe out that good person's assets. Didn't matter how good they were or how bad they were. It's all about discipline and awareness, right? Becoming disciplined, like, okay, here is how I defend, establish, protect, perpetuate my kingdom. Here's how I become aware to the environment that I live in, right? So if you take, for example, uh, God himself, God has a kingdom called heaven, right? And it's a invisible kingdom. You can't touch it, can't see it, can't smell it, can't feel it, right? So God has this invisible kingdom and he makes multiple claims in the Bible, which he authored, right? That he has a ready and standing loyal army called legions, right? So this guy, God, invisible, immaterial, can't smell it, touch it, feel it, has a kingdom that's completely invisible, can't see it, but he has a entire army to defend it. He has gates, he has walls, he has defenses, he has angels, cherubs, he has, diff he has a hierarchy in the angels, the, pe the, the, the loyal angels that serve him. He has a hierarchy and even in that system and he has an entire army to defend whom this guy is god almighty all-knowing what does he need an army for so even he has one right so it's important that you as a human being 
to know that, hey, you know, we're not in control of everything, but there are certain things that we can do to put in place to defend ourselves, no matter how good we are, no matter how nice and humble and soft-spoken and, you know, loving and caring, you know, none of that matters when the enemy comes at your gates. None of that matters. The enemy does not care how nice you are. The enemy comes to kill, rob, destroy, steal, right? Confuse, persuade, does all that. So you, as a likable, loving, kind, humble person, you need to know how to pick up your shield, pick up your sword, defend yourself. Pick up your pen, defend yourself, right? You ever heard that term? I remember in school, the, the pen is mightier than the sword. In some cases, that's very true, and some, eh, not so much, right? So coming to terms with that, um, and then for me, I would say about 1% to 3% of my annual gross income I'll dedicate to this category. And this is just me as a 24-year-old. So the number might be higher for those who are in their late 60s, late 50s. You have a ton of assets, a lot of savings. You have businesses. You have real estate property. Obviously, you might have to expand that budget a little bit more, but not that much, maybe 5 to 7%. Nothing crazy, right? Now, me, I like to find tools that are affordable, that do the same job, if not better, right? So for me, I have a personal legal protection plan. And by the way, these three different tools, identity theft, cybersecurity, personal and business legal protection, I have it all through this company, Legal Shield, for those three things, just those three things, right? I have it through Legal Shield. So I got a personal legal plan. I pay $24.95 a month. That's $299.40 annually. Identity theft. $15.95 a month, that's identity theft protection, that's credit score monitoring, that's anything I put into there like passport, driver's license, email addresses, bank accounts, credit card statements. Um, even if I had a, a, a spouse, right, I could add them to it. Or if I got the family pl plan, if I had kids, I could add them to it. So it's, it's a evolving plan as I continue to own it. So it gets better over time. It's not bad at all. So it's one ninety one forty a year currently. So I have also a business protection plan. It's nine ninety five a month, so it's one nineteen forty annual. This is for home base businesses. There is a business plan for business owners with employees with brick and mortar locations. So that is a little bit higher because you're dealing with you know brick and mortar and you're dealing with employees. So there's a plan for you. But if you're just a home-based business, you know, no employees, just you, you really only need this plan, the business protection one. And what I'll do is I'll, you know, show you guys the different plans, kind of breaking it down. This is the website. So Legal Shield, got the $24.95, the ID Shield. It says $11.95 right here, but there are different ones that you can get, right? So me, you can do the one bureau. Me, I do all three, all right? TransUnion, Experian, Equifax. I cover all three. If I had a family, kids, wife, right? $29.95 a month, I'd probably just go with that one and get the three bureaus, not just one. So, but, you know, all within budget. If this is all you can afford and you start small, you work your way up, right? So don't get overwhelmed when you see the amount of stuff that I have just observe it and say, okay, that's cool. I think I can start with this. I think I can start here, you know, according to my four major numbers, right? So you always need to know what our four major numbers are, right? Got to know it. Income, expense, debt, and cash flow. Based on that cash flow number, how much are we willing to dedicate to this new expense while we pay off debt, while we... 10x while we you know do infinite banking and all that different stuff okay so identity theft small business notice how it says 39 bucks there so that's like if you had a business with like employees and whatnot 
but um, if you had a home business, right? They've got this one right here, home business supplement, $9.95 a month, right? And this, like I said, this is great for people like myself that work from home. Um, you know, you don't have a brick and mortar. You're not, um, you know, renting a piece of property or anything like that. Although I do have an office, which I'm in right now, but, you know, I'm not going to be in here for a very long period of time. So I didn't see the value in really having it. I have like, I have a protection plan in case any of my belongings in here get stolen, which is separate from Legal Shield, and I and I have a person that I um, co-lease. I I pay half, fifty percent of the rent, so I'm actually sharing my office with another business owner, and they have a plan that protects any of our belongings in here. So I kind of lucked out on that, uh, benefited from that. So the next one is gun owner protection, okay? If you have a weapon, if you have guns, guns or just one gun, hey, um, knowing your rights as an American citizen, very important, okay? And when you don't know your rights, it's only a matter of time before somebody makes an attempt to abuse your rights as an American citizen or whichever country you live in where you claim citizenship at, right? So me, as a kingdom citizen, I represent the kingdom of heaven here on earth. There is going to be a time when the enemy is going to challenge my faith. The enemy is going to try and persuade me to operate out of kingdom protocols, kingdom nature. So what do I do? I have a defense plan for my own spiritual, personal development. That involves reading the word. That involves petitioning or AKA praying. That involves um, networking with like-minded individuals, right? Connecting with people that also have faith, right? So when, I, when I'm in a room with multiple people that have faith, then I feel even more secure more peace of mind. If my family also has faith, also brings peace of mind. Okay, my household is on the same page. So I understand those things, so therefore I create a defense plan around that. Now, none of that costs me any money. It costs time. And one could say time is money. So wherever you spend your time is where you will see the fruits for which you plant your seeds in certain areas of your life. So gun or gun owner protection 1295 a month. That's 15540 annual. Um so if we go over here, gun owner <clears throat> pretty interesting. Um you know, if you were to look at all the details, you can go to the plan details like this under anyone and you can just read the entire contract. It's super cool. Right? Not bad at all. It's good stuff. Good. It's good stuff to read. Good stuff to get aware of. Trial defense is another supplement thing. I pay nine ninety five a month. It's one nineteen forty annual. Basically, adds more hours in the court in case I ever had to, you know, go to court for major case or whatever. Whatever it may be, wouldn't have an issue. Legal Shield's gonna, you know, cover me for majority of the cost, if not all. <clears throat> I've never been to court, but if I was to go to court and me as an American citizen, 24 years old, I don't know my rights when I go to the courthouse. I haven't spent time in that. So what I do is I spend money in an area where I can latch on to lawyers, right, or a law firm, where they will act on my behalf to protect my American rights, period. So, total cost of all this, me personally, this is what I pay for, total cost is $885 a month. Uh, no, a year, sorry. <laughs> $885 a year, over a 40 year period, I will spend probably $35,000 and some change or even more than that 
over a 40 year period. Now, 40 years is a very special number. You know, 40 years is a generation. So if I do something consistently, right? Consistently, can't spell. <clears throat> if I do something consistently for 40 years, I create a culture that is very hard to break. I want you to think about the amount of years your bloodline, your generation has been in debt. So I want you to think about yourself. For most of you that are, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old, how many years have you been in debt? Right? And then I want you to think how many years has your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, anyone that's older than you in the family, how long have they been in debt? And how long have their moms and dads been in debt? Understand, if the number is 40 years or, or close to 40 years, you've created a culture, a generational curse in that bloodline, in that family, in that household name. So some cultures are not productive. Having a culture where your family just seems to make sense of having loads and loads of debt and not having a strategic plan how to turn that debt into an asset where it makes you money or get rid of all the debt period and be done with it and be free from the institutions, right? So that is culture, right? You create a culture. It becomes very, very difficult to break. Notice how most of you that are over the age of 40 and you're in your later years and now you're magically trying to pay off all your debt in two and a half years or four years or five years, right? You're looking up the fastest way to pay off debt and it's very possible, right? Not by doing magic, but by running numbers, creating the discipline, creating the awareness in advance, right? And us being able to press forward move forward and realize our mistakes. Okay, that was a culture that I no longer want to represent, right? So I'm, in my household, here are the cultures that I'm establishing. So I'm establishing that having legal protection is a culture, identity theft protection, it's a culture, um, cybersecurity, it's a culture, being debt free, being debt leveraged, having assets, 10xing my income, being a, a positive, loving, caring, humble, giving in abundance with cheerfulness through the heart is a culture. If I create the culture, the next generation is not even going to think twice. They're, it becomes second nature. Giving becomes second nature. It's automatic. I don't have to convince you to buy this. I don't have to convince my, my younger generation, my unborn generation, right? I don't have to convince them to 10x their income. It's culture. Rather than feeding them a culture of go and borrow from Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, City, go and get loads and loads of credit card debt from City Bank and Discover and, you know, all these crazy you know, loan rates, amortized loans, and oh yeah, finance your car and do all this. If I remove that culture, every time they get approached with it, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't know, that don't seem right. I have my own bank called Rodriguez d, &D Funding. I don't think it makes sense to borrow from Bank of America because I have my own bank. Bank of America is charging me 9% amortized. Rodriguez D&D funding is charging me zero. And I actually get to earn money on the money that I finance from myself as long as I pay myself back over a period of time. Hmm. Culture. That's all I'm presenting to you this evening.
is a new culture, a new way of thinking. So, coming back, um, the next thing, the next part of my budget, so this is me personally, and we went over the three major protection tools so far, personal and business legal protection, cybersecurity protection, identity theft protection. I would say the cybersecurity is with the identity theft when it comes to legal shield because they do the monitoring for many different tools that you know we use uh, when we're sharing our information with institutions and things like that. The next thing I create is a family protection plan, right? Family protection kingdom plan, okay? So these products that I own, I will also um, pay for my family to own them as well until they establish the culture that it makes sense for them to purchase these things and for them to pay it themselves. But until then, I'm paying for most or all of these plans, right? So I dedicate $111.75 per month. That's $1,341 per year over a 40 year period. That's $53,640 that I'll pay for my family to also have business protection, identity theft protection, legal protection, gun owner protection, trial defense, all those different things. I spend 53 grand over a 40 year period that saves me millions of dollars over a generational time frame. Because then the next generation sees that not only did their father did it, mother did it, brother did it, sister did it, auntie did it, uncle did it, grandma did it, it's a culture. Create the culture, very hard to break, right? Whether it's a good or a bad thing, it's very hard to break culture. So the next thing is uh, general liability insurance. I put unknown. I used to own this. I had a policy for one year. It expired. The person that I was working with actually went out of business during COVID, so I didn't renew. So now I'm in the search for general liability insurance, uh, professional liability insurance. Uh, what I do have right now, I have something called errors and omissions. This is something that, did I spell it wrong? This is something that um, life insurance agents, insurance agents, like uh, I think like maybe car insurance agents, like anyone that's an agent that has a license in their state that sells policies with contracts and like legal language and things like that. Uh, it's required that they, they have this thing called errors and omissions, and it falls under this as well, if I'm not mistaken, professional liability insurance. So I do have this, but I'm also looking to obtain professional liability insurance for my YouTube channel and for my company. Like my company, which my YouTube channel is tied to my company in that sense. So I'm in the hunt for that. So notice how I don't have it all in line, and that's okay. It's a building, it's a building block, right? These are things that I will build. I'm not in fear that I don't have general liability insurance or professional liability insurance. I'm not in fear, I just, I'm aware. I'm aware and I have the discipline. I've created the budget. I know my four major numbers. I know what I'm gonna throw at it. So therefore, when I make that relationship, when I find someone I know, like, and trust, boom, I'm in. Last but not least is health insurance, okay? As a business owner, you know, uh, now that I'm no longer employed, I got to find health insurance myself. I gotta go hunt for it, right? So I have had an, a, a pre-existing relationship with Wealth Dynamics, uh, the owner, it's Jerry Feta out of, out of Alaska. Awesome guy. He's a 10X guy, right? He's, he, he's all about 10Xing your income, building a business 
asset protection. You know, he's pro IBC. He likes it, likes the velocity banking concept. Um, he has an established organization that provides a whole list of um, great services. One of them that I have uh, initiated this year that I've started is health insurance. You know, again, I had someone I was working with last year. My health insurance expired this year. I haven't taken the time to renew. Now I have. I'm putting the final pieces in play. So me personally, I'll be paying $225 a month using the health insurance plan that Wealth Dynamics offers through their system. I don't know how it all works. I just know, like, and trust the guy. He uses it himself. So I say, you know what? If you're using it and you're 10xing your income, you're making a ton of wealth, I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you, right? I'm going to learn with you. I'm going to keep building my kingdom. So very satisfied with the service that I was provided. So health insurance, 225 a month is what I'm paying. And it is a, uh, it's an eligible health insurance plan for a health savings account or HSA, which I will be funding $3,550 a year, right? That's for 2020. I think, I think every year for the past couple of years or so, I think it's been going up by 50 bucks. I remember in 2019, it was 3,500. So 2020, it's now 3,550. Next year, it'll probably be 3,600. Who knows? But um, having this health savings account is pretty cool. You know, it's a triple tax benefit. You get a deduction putting money in. You get a deduction taking money out when you use it for medical and, and uh, medical expenses. And you can uh, reduce that off your taxes. I forget. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, so it's taxed, tax deduction on the 3550 going in. And then it's tax free growth, or I should say tax deferred growth in the account itself. So you don't get taxed on the growth when you invest it. And then when you go to withdraw the funds, as long as it's for medical expenses, you can reimburse yourself. It's another tax saving. So really, really cool strategy there in terms of not only protecting my health, because health is wealth, right? Uh, so now I'm protecting my health. I got the health insurance plan, but I also have the health savings account, which is something that'll build over many, many years. When I become old and gray, when my back goes out and my knees stop working and my elbows start, you know, the joints start giving out and my cognitive levels decrease, hey, I'm going to have this well-established health savings account, probably a half a million, million dollars or more in there when I'm in my 60s or 70s, right? So if I just did the math, you know, let's just say the number stood at 3550 for, for uh, you know, 50 years. That's $177,500 in principle over a 50-year period, again, creating a culture. My generation, my unborn children are going to see, oh, daddy had health insurance for his whole entire life. Daddy had a health savings account, right, that he funded every single year religiously. And when dad got old, we never had to worry about paying anything out of pocket because he had the system set up since day one. He knew that he was going to die at some point in his life. He knew that his health was going to decline at some point in his life. It's unavoidable. So by me knowing this, I create the culture. When my kids become of age, they start being able to afford things. There's no issue. They, they establish it. And so once the, once the culture is created, the next generation follows suit, very hard to break. Very, very, very hard to break. And that's my lesson. Creating a budget, simple. Creating a defense budget for your kingdom, here are the tools to be aware of. I gave you some resources. You guys can send me an email, let me know, hey, I want to start here, I want to start there. Um, I'll go from there. I also want to share one more thing with you. I'm going to share my screen again. 
So in the Velocity Banking Manifesto, I will be having a new uh, section coming out called Creating a Defense Budget for Your Kingdom. And I'm going to be, you know, talking to specific people with different careers, right? So this is what the whole section will look like. It's not done yet. This video will be in here to, to rewatch, and I'm, I'll probably break it up into different sections or just edit it out. But this is great. Now, all or most, I should say, probably the legal and identity theft protection plan through uh, Legal Shield. If you're someone that has a, you know, you're, you have a career position, right? So if you have like a career position at your job, been there for many years, you know the HR, you know the CEO, um, what Legal Shield does, and I have the authority to, to offer this to business owners, is voluntary employee benefits, right? So you could approach your HR department or your CEO and ask, hey, what, what voluntary employee benefits do you guys offer here? If they really don't have anything and you say, hey, I know someone, right, me, I know someone that can offer a very comprehensive uh, voluntary employee benefit plan for legal protection, identity theft protection. This can help employees perform better, have peace of mind, releases stress, increases performance, lowers, um, you know, a, reduces uh, absence from your employees because oftentimes when you encounter a legal matter, that may require you to take a whole entire day off to handle that. Whereas if you had a legal shield plan, you call your lawyer and they can help you handle majority of the work. You don't have to leave your work to go do more work. That's what, that's the benefit of having a protection plan when it comes to health, right? Your finances, your spiritual development, when you have a protection plan, we're steady, we're good. So that could be something that you could present to your uh, employer, to the CEO, to your boss, because um, what's super cool is Legal Shield, because it's a group enrollment, so multiple people would, you know, presumptuously would be paying for the, the service, whether it's legal and identity theft protection, right? Let's say you've got 50 employees and, you know, 25 people want to sign up. What Legal Shield can do, depending on who you work with, and I'm telling you, me as a Legal Shield representative and a Legal Shield customer, I have the authority to actually offer a discounted group rate. So for example, you notice how I showed that the legal plan was $24.95 a month and the identity theft was like $15.95 a month, something like that is what I'm paying. Well, focusing on the legal plan, the $24.95 a month, that's what I pay personally. But if you work for an employer and you get your business owner, the HR department to agree on adding this as a voluntary employee benefit, there's no uh, drawback for the business owner to just offer it. It, it increases how they find talent with their employees. I can offer it for as low as like like 20 bucks. So you get to pay less, right? A couple dollars less than what is advertised on the website. So it's a group discount. But not only that, if the business owner you work for is willing to do a partial fringe or maybe a full fringe where they just cover the whole thing and now you got the business owner that you work for paying for legal and identity theft protection because they know that if Susan has legal protection identity theft protection you know these these nice unique employee benefit features 
it's going to cause Susan to perform better at her job. She's going to have peace of mind, less stress. She produces more for the company. The company makes more money. It's a great investment for the company. It's a write-off for them anyways. So whether it's a full fringe or maybe a partial fringe, they'll say, okay, I'll pay the first five bucks, the first ten dollars. And so you out of pocket, maybe you're only coming out of pocket ten, ten bucks, right? Or, or 15 bucks, whatever it is. So that's just another little thought for those that want to, uh, you know, that want the plan, you, you know, you want all of it, but maybe you can't really afford it right now. Whatever the case may be, like I said, don't get overwhelmed. Just become aware to it, create the discipline, create the culture. Once the culture is established, it's very hard to break.